Van Eckhoi's method is so relevant for musicians. You really want to establish a certain freedom. Our movements become smoother. What is your story? I can create many more nuances. Whether you like it or not, I'm going to say it. And now make circles in the opposite direction and start now with small circles and then start enlarging them and notice if the circle is really round. Renaco's method is very relevant to musicians because musicians tend to injure themselves. Musicians do repetitive movements as they practice during the day. They are usually very disciplined and they work many, many hours, allowing them to have more ease as they play, allowing them to have more options as they play, also allowing them to prevent injury or to heal from injury. And imagine that someone is calling your name from behind, you turn to look, you, you, you look to see who is calling and notice if you're seeing a bit farther. Anyone sees a difference? Anyone notice a difference? What we did here right now we woke up another section of your spine that is very relevant to turning to look who, who is calling my name, but I just kind of, you just kind of, it was not in the foreground. So in Fennecrise, by doing all this nonsense, little movement, we wake up ourselves more and more and more. So whatever, it's really a learning from inside out not so much by doing something that someone is telling us. Musicians make music because they feel the need to make music and they are uh, expressing their feelings through music. But at the end of the, the process, what really creates the sound that comes out of the instruments is the movement that they make. I'm a musician and for a long, long, long time, when I, was not in, when I was not tensed, I felt that I was not expressive. In order to feel expressive, I really needed to do something. So I think what we have to do is learn other ways of playing with intense uh, uh, ideas, intense uh, determination, and then decide whether we want to be tensed or not. But if we are only tensed when we want to play expressively, then we don't have a choice. The Fali Christ is all about giving ourselves choices. And then at your own pace, just go once to one, one side and once to the other side. And as you are there, see if you can, in your image of yourself, swell that side of your ribcage. What we are seeing is a group of people who don't care what their neighbors do, who don't care about what their teacher thinks about what they do. And they are in a state of mind that they are really just exploring what is happening for them. And we all have shapes to our spine. And of course, we were imagining the rib cage before, but the ribs are connected to our spine. And it's only as much as the spine allows them to fan that they will be able to fan. And people were saying that your trunk is usually moving with your bow. Right. So I'll, 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 uh, I'll help you exaggerate it also. The lesson with, with uh, Elaine had a lot to do with more flexibility. And when we talk about flexibility, uh, we, we have to, to know what it is exactly that we are looking after. Thank you.
Very often, just the awareness whether the torso, the trunk, moves together with the bow or can move also the other way is a very important tool to help them gain another mean of expression. Make it more complicated now. Sure. Your head is going to go with the bow, your eyes are going to go the other way. <laughs> So, so your eye, actually, you look at your, your yeah. uh, no, don't, I mean, your head is here, but your eyes are there. Okay, wow. Do it slowly, do it really slowly. Okay, so I'm going to... Okay, I'll do the head and you do the eyes. The other way. <laughs> It's, you don't have to succeed now, but you know what you to look for. And this is really, that's a really very high level of differentiation. So one is going to be pushing away, and the other one is retracting, and then the other one is pushing away with the heel, and the other one, first one is retracting. Okay. And pay attention to what is happening in your upper body. He came with a complaint of uh, pain in his shoulder and shoulder blade. Instead of going directly to his shoulder blade, I enticed him in a way by asking him to do this movement initially with his legs but then he took his pelvis and he took his spine and he took his rib cage and it influenced him all the way up to his the top of his head He actually, and with some also suggestions with my hands and with my words to pay attention to different areas, not just the area that is now doing the movement, something changed for him. And at the end, I was feeling the area that he initially was complaining about, and I also asked him about, about it, and he said, oh, it feels much better. It was something that he really created. And the change that occurred was a change that his entire system was able to integrate. So it's something that stays with him. And let's do again, look up to the ceiling. Feels good. good. But I am locking my knees. Yeah, <laughs> but you're noticing it now. Yeah. <laughs> Lie down. Okay. Put your feet standing and go to, to 12. <laughs> yeah. And go to 6. The process of learning to move more freely involves learning to differentiate or feel separately different parts in the body. Play, six, in play and be at six o'clock. <laughs> The richness of music involves different layers and different depths. Okay, every time in the music you feel that you have something which you need to feel heavy, just bend your knees. Okay. about hierarchy of depth or heaviness in your music so not every it's heavy beat will see if it go at, uh, the same place so go a little bit less and then mm -hmm. on, on yeah. more sure. 
pronounced beats go yeah. further down. Yeah, yeah. And you can do it now with, the, with your knees also. Eventually, I would hope that you will be able to do it without having to bend your knees, but you can just do yeah. it, just feel the, the, the weight. <laughs> Ah, and they have to feel it physically, not just intellectually or, or musically. Once we feel uh, that uh, variety of different depths in our body, we can actually uh, show that in our music much more effectively. I talk a lot about the difference between uh, tension and intensity. Uh, a lot of what we see is a certain tension that is coming to help the musical intensity. And it's, it, was, it is manifested around the mouth. So my belief is, in, I cannot go to somebody, somebody and, and tell them, don't do that. They need to do it because they need to express, and that's the best way they can express. What we, I can do is come to Rubia and ask her to be playful with different things that her mouth can do. Let's play with the tongue a little bit more. Can you bring the tongue to the right side of your lips? Inside. like this? No, outside. Okay. Huh? And play like that once. This area is very dominant in your awareness. Mm -hmm. So if you, from the time to time, need to look down uh, okay. at the keys, mm -hmm. still keep, keep looking that way, because actually the sound comes out of there. Did you pay attention to your? Not really. No, and and right. but it it, it, it I looked. I was actually showing the people just to 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 watch because you didn't plan to do that, right? Mm -hmm. It just yeah. happened. Suddenly, it gives the the mouth much more freedom, and then she will feel when she is very tense, and she she can decide if she wants to stay there or she wants to do something else. The idea is not so much that, okay, here is the pain, and let's see what we do for this area. In Western medicine, uh, we, we, we have diagnosis, and when we, then we have plan. Then, then we, we, we have some kind of a therapy, and it is, it's a very linear thing. And in Fenacris, we know that if the brain gets information, the nervous system will know what to do, will do something better with this information. Sometimes we don't know exactly how it's going to happen, but we trust the wisdom of the body to really heal itself. <laughs> 